The numbers are sobering, but the idea here is not to discourage you, but to inspire you to get the job that you want and the salary that you want. It is possible, especially when you have an employment professional helping you out. That's what I have for you right now. Meet Dan Miller. He is from Monster.com. Dan is the vice president of content at this popular job site. He joins me from our CN8 Boston Bureau. Welcome, Dan. Hello, how are you? I'm doing very well. And it's a topic that, you know, their numbers, we hear them in a way it can feel depressing, but it really, if you know what you want and you're, you have a good game plan, there are jobs out there. Absolutely. I think it's very important for job seekers to understand what they want and go after what they want. Uh, you need to find a job that delights you, that excites you, and those jobs are out there. They, that might not be something that somebody who um, has to pay a mortgage is going to say. They may be looking for just a job to get by, but when they're in that job, they can go out and find something a lot better. It's very key to go where the jobs are as well. On Monster, we've seen a large increase in jobs in healthcare and sales and even in the financial services industry. Uh, financial service industry jobs, particularly in accounting and auditing, auditing are up 48% from this time over last year. So the job seekers should just be understand where those jobs are and then go out and get those. Because jobs may be lost in your current ind industry, whatever you do, but there may be a very similar job, especially in administration and sales and marketing in another industry. That's interesting that you brought that up. We see a lot of career changers uh, on Monster, uh, people who are going back to school, uh, getting their skills, getting a certification, and making sure that they're well equipped to move on to the next job. I think it's also important to mention that, and not many people think about this, that working for the federal government is an opportunity. 82% of federal jobs are outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, not many people may realize that. And in three years, over 57% of federal workers, non-U.S. postal uh, federal workers will be facing retirement. So there are going to be opportunities working for the federal government and a lot of those jobs across the industries uh, can apply there. And again, there, as you said, there are so many different uh, jobs within all of these different organizations. So find your passion, what you want to do, and then maybe be flexible about where you're going to do that job. Absolutely. I think it's important, again, to do what you want to do uh, you may not find that job right away, but you should always be looking. I think it's important to have what we call a dynamic resume. Uh, keep track of your accomplishments no matter what job you're working at. Uh, build those numbers, build those accomplishments, and then use those to find the next job. That also will help you advance in a current job. If you find a company that you really like, there are opportunities in that company. Make sure you take advantage of that. Oh, that brings up an interesting point that I want to discuss with you as we're kind of talking about the general ideas of the search right now is company loyalty. Do you stay or do you go and, and what is better for you? Let me read this quote uh, for you here and get your opinion on it. It is from uh, Dossier from Management Recruiters. They say, top executives agree that the days of faithful service, 30 plus years with one employer are gone. In fact, experience at several good companies is considered an asset because your horizons are expanded. Today, changing jobs is a necessity if you expect your career to grow. And so many young people, especially Dan, get their advice from their parents who were company folks. You know, they stayed there the 30 years. I, I remember, I, I grew up in upstate New York where IBM was big and uh, I just remember being in grade school and everyone, everyone's dad uh, or mom worked at IBM and that was a lifelong job and I think that clearly is not the case right now. I think you'll see uh, people changing jobs perhaps every three to five years, uh, even uh, more than that and you really are your own, uh, it's important that you're own, your own brand ambassador and that when you are on a job that you make sure that you're doing the best you can at that job by learning, by continuing continuing to seek out education. I think and retention is going to be a huge issue in 2005 and I think the employers that really get it are going to encourage those employees to go back to school, to get a certificate, maybe take some online training, uh, whatever it is that they can do to uh, make their uh, skill set a little stronger because it is about you. It's not necessarily about the company, but companies are going to want those players because those are the A players who think very highly of themselves and are willing to uh, do the extra work to be better at their jobs. And that's important information for folks because it is really a change in the environment out there. Now let's talk about the actual search now. Let's get into it. And uh, first we've talked about take some stock. What do you want to do? What are your skills? Do you need more education? 
education. Now let's talk about finding that job. Um, of course you work for monster.com so you know the internet is a great place for folks to look but what are some of the tools folks can use to get that job beyond just the internet? I think you know obviously communication skills are critical and uh, I think emotional intelligence is a critical, a, a critical attribute to have uh, for somebody who is looking for a job and is on a job. And that, what I mean by emotional intelligence is understanding how to work with your peers, how to work with your supervisor, how to work with your direct reports, and how to communicate effectively. People are very, very different. And I think you'll be a stronger player and will stand out from your, the rest of the players at a company if you can show strong communication skills. And that not only goes to how you speak with people, but how you write an email. Uh, remote employees are a necessity uh, with today's uh, job market in 2004. And you may have never met somebody, but you've read their email. It's very critical that uh, somebody uh, is able to write a cohesive, coherent email, because that may be the only impression you have of that person. So communication skills, I think, are a strong attribute to have for somebody uh, who's working. I, I wanted to mention another way that um, you can really find a job and that's through a blog. Um, Weblogs have been around for five years but and really... And Dan, let's, let's explain to you now our internet savvy viewers already know what a blog is but some may not. Let's explain what a blog is. A, a blog is really short for weblog and it's really a online diary so to speak or an online journal uh, that somebody can write their thoughts down on a daily basis. And uh, the, the first blog I think appeared in 1999 right here in Cambridge and uh, as of um, the last number I heard a few weeks ago, there are more than two million blogs. And what this really is is a marketing tool, whether you like it or not. Now, this can have good and bad implications for you. Right, because if someone reads this, they maybe put your name in and on a web search, they may get your blog and you may have said some things that aren't so great that don't represent you very well. Absolutely. I think all potential employers, hiring managers or recruiters, they're going to Google you. I mean, Google has, is now in our vernacular as a verb, as a way to do a very inexpensive background check. So if you're writing a blog and you're saying things in your blog like, you know, I had a crummy day at work, I hate my job, or my boss is an idiot, that's documented. That's on uh, the web. And, and it's there forever, as it, we all know, because we can go back and when we've all done searches, we see things that go back years. Now, the spirit of the blog is free speech and to say what you want, but I think uh, as job seekers create weblogs, blogs, they need to be careful about what they're putting down because it could show up and haunt them uh, and maybe hurt them as they go for a job. That's great advice. Well, when we come right back, we're going to talk resumes and the interview.